everyone and welcome. We're so glad that you're here to help us celebrate our Community Night Spotlight. As you can tell, it's different than our usual event, but until we can safely be back together, we hope you'll enjoy some of our fun activities, watching great performances, and celebrating all of the communities that make Boston a wonderful place to live, grow, and learn in this virtual space instead of our museum. Tonight, we're celebrating Latino, Latina, Latinx heritage, and we have three amazing community partners joining us, Latinitas, Avance, and Mexicante. They have created some fabulous activities that explore Latino culture and that are simple enough that you can do at home with items you may already have. First up is Latinitas, with an activity that will help you celebrate summer all year long. Take it away, Latinitas. My name is Andrea Morales. I'm a program leader with Latinitas. Thank you for joining me for this week's video. I'm really excited to be outside today in the fresh air and sunshine surrounded by nature. Our lesson today is going to focus on just that, the beauty and benefits of immersing yourself in nature. Then we're going to look at how you can preserve the beauty that you see in flowers and leaves by learning how to flower press. Before we get started, here's a list of things that you'll need. Some natural flowers, leaves, and other plants, computer paper, heavy objects like a stack of books or some heavy plates, and an iron. Nature has always played a large role in Latin American culture. Indigenous groups like the Aztecs and the Mayans have a history of incorporating flowers and plants into their textiles, artwork, and religious customs. Inspired by the radiance of their surroundings, the cultural customs of Latin American countries reflected the value that they placed on natural beauty and abundance. Throughout the centuries, flowers have become an essential icon of Latino culture, showcasing the diversity of Latin America's regions through a variety of celebrations and traditions. Nature is glorified as abundant and common, providing balance to our lives, Studies show that being in nature reduces anger, anxiety, and stress. It also has many benefits to your health, including lowering blood pressure and muscle tension, and providing vitamin D through exposure to sunlight. When you do this activity, I recommend you go to a local park or a nature center. Take a book or a sketchbook and find a comfortable spot to sit in. Things can get really overwhelming sometimes, and it's important to watch not just our physical health, but our mental health as well. Spending some time to yourself, listening to birds and feeling the warm summer breeze can leave you feeling really refreshed and motivated and it can ease any tensions that you may have been experiencing. With all of that said, it's time to jump into the tutorial. Like I said before, you'll wanna to go to a park or a field or even your own backyard to collect your flowers. I started with these beautiful leaves I found near a creek. You'll want to take a pair of scissors and carefully clip the leaves at the base. Only cut off the pieces that you want and leave the rest of the plant intact. Larger, waxier leaves like the ones from this magnolia tree aren't great for flower pressing because they're too stiff to flatten easily. There are so many varieties of flowers to choose from. A good rule of thumb is to collect flowers that have soft petals and thin stems. This will make them easier to press. Snip the flowers close to the base and watch out for any thorns or bugs. Some flowers, like these red ones, are easy to pick off with your hand. Just be careful to get the whole flower when you pick it off because it's easy for them to tear since they're so delicate. Once you find a good place to collect, you'll be amazed at just how diverse nature can be. From lilies to roses to huge oak trees, all of the shapes, sizes, and colors are truly amazing. It's a good time to stop and appreciate the little things that make our lives just so beautiful. Now that you've got your collection, it's time to start pressing. Here I have laid out all of my materials. I have scissors to cut any stems. I have regular computer paper. Heavy objects, I chose these three cookbooks. I have my iron. And of course, I have my flowers, which I kept in this container so as to not crush them on the way home. 
So as you can see, some of the flowers still have the stems attached underneath. So I'm just going to take my scissors and snip off anything that sticks out. This will make the flower sit more evenly as it dries. For the smaller flowers that have thinner stems, you don't really need to snip these off because they aren't very bulky and it's much easier to flatten them. The first method of flower pressing I'm going to show you is pressing with heavy objects. I've chosen to use this big cookbook, but you can really use whatever you have as long as the flowers are kept on a flat, even surface. Take your paper and line the inside of your book. The paper is going to absorb all of the moisture from the flowers, which will prevent mold and help preserve the colors. Then you're going to choose the flowers that you'll want to press. I went with a few different kinds of similar colors and textures, as well as a larger leaf. Take your time arranging them on the page. Make sure each flower has plenty of space and check to see if you need to trim any extra stems or leaves. For flowers that have especially thin stems, you can usually leave them attached. It just gives a different look to the finished product, but it's totally up to you. When you're happy with how everything is laid out, take another piece of paper and very carefully lay it on top of your flowers. Hold it in place and gently close the book over the flowers, making sure nothing moves or falls out. Give it a good press and check for any bumps that keep the book from closing completely. Finally, you're going to lay the rest of your heavy objects on top. I've chosen a few more cookbooks. It's going to be tempting not to touch them, but you really need to let them sit undisturbed for at least five days. This gives the flowers plenty of time to dry out and preserve, so be patient. The next method I'll show you is the iron method. Here I have my standard iron. For this method, you'll need an adult to help you. Most irons have a compartment that holds water. You'll need to pour out all of it and make sure that your iron is dry. There's usually a hole near the top to refill. Have your parent pour out the water to prevent any moisture hitting your flowers. Next, your parent needs to set the iron to a low setting. If the heat is too high, you can burn the petals and leaves, so don't go too hot and set it aside to warm up while you prepare your flower arrangement. Same as before, you'll want to choose flowers that are ideal for flattening. Nothing too bulky or stiff. I went with this beautiful stem of leaves because it was already pretty flat and I knew it would dry out nicely. I also chose this small pink rosette because I loved the color. Once you've got everything picked out, set your container aside. Just like before, you'll want to arrange things carefully and give even more space in between so that you can focus your iron on one of them at a time. Fix the leaves or petals to look how you want. The iron will dry the plants out in the shape that you give them, so take your time with this step. Next, grab your sheet of paper and very carefully lay it over your plants. Press gently to make sure that they're staying in place. And then bring your iron over and lay it on one of the plants at a time without moving it for about five seconds. If you move the iron, you risk your plants moving underneath and it could cause more damage. Lift the iron and move over to the other plants. Repeat the process about 10 times for each one, making sure not to move the iron too much and checking the heat frequently. This method works by drawing out all of the moisture in the plants through the heat of the iron. This mimics the natural drying process and gives you similar results in much less time. It's convenient and quick, but the results are a little different than the previous method I showed you. It's all up to you and your preference for which one you want to try, but just be sure to leave your ironed flowers out for at least 24 hours so that they can finish cooling and developing their color for the best results. Once you're finished ironing, Carefully lift the paper to reveal your flowers. The paper will still be hot, so be careful not to burn yourself. Gently remove your flowers from the paper and admire your finished product. Congratulations, you have successfully flower pressed. Flower pressing is a practice that anyone can do. Whether you do it as a professional art form or only as a hobby, it allows us to preserve our natural surroundings and create mementos that we can treasure permanently. 
I had a lot of fun with this project. Not just pressing the flowers, but also getting to spend some time outside admiring nature. I really hope this inspires you to look for beauty in your surroundings and start your own collection. As always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you, Andrea, and to everyone at Latinitas. What a great reminder to take some time each day to go outside and enjoy nature. Next, Avance is going to show us how to make an educational toy with some everyday items that will engage your little ones. Enjoy! My name is Nancy Ramirez and I'm a home educator for Avance Austin. This is the end of your result from assembling all the materials that we show you. And this is the happy face and the sad face. And it's very important that when we use this pillow, we're going to teach the child how to play with it. You can use it as a visual, you can show them how it looks, it looks sad. What the child is listening and we can say how do you laugh ha 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 or how do you cry oh, wee. and you can show them how you cry this is what i did something different with the pillow that we already have and i encourage you to also do it with your children this is to connect me with my culture i'm coming from mexico i'm born in oaxaca and where i am from we use this wimil that it has a lots of flowers. So I like to uh, wear flowers whenever I can. And I transform this pillow as the Katrina. Katrina's an icon for the Dia de los Muertos. And I want to transmit that to my generations to come. I teach my children about the colors, a lot about the tradition, and also the history about traditions like you see the flowers I add flowers to the pillow and my kids see me with flowers sometimes on my hair and also um, the braided hair and uh, I also use sometimes we braid my hair and we have the set pillow this was color painted and if you like to try that it's very easy what we learned today it will help you to uh, have fun learn new things with your children and also transfer your culture for the next generation Thank you to Ana and Anurita for showing us how simple and fun it can be to create learning opportunities for even the littlest ones. Finally, our friends from Mexicante are going to show you how to do a relief printmaking 
a traditional art form in Latin American cultures. Hi, I'm Nikki Diaz, Education Associate with Mexic Arte Museum. Mexic Arte Museum is dedicated to the cultural enrichment and education through the collection, presentation, and preservation of traditional and contemporary Mexican, Latinx, and Latin American art and culture. Today we're going to show you a basic printmaking technique called relief printing. Let's get started. Today we are doing a relief nature monoprint. A monoprint is a form of printmaking that allows you to create free form painted images. We will start with some nature monoprints. Take a walk with a trusted adult and collect items from nature. Fallen leaves, rocks, feathers, or flowers. Get a variety of sizes and shapes. On a flat surface, spread out paint or printing ink. Press your leaf into the paint or ink. Working quickly, press your leaf against a sheet of paper to test out a print. Place a sheet of scrap paper over the leaf and use a spoon to rub in all the parts of your leaf. Remove the paper and carefully pull back your leaf to check the print. You will be able to see if you use too much or too little paint. Practice creating a variety of designs with different colors and leaves. Arrange them in different patterns or directions to create movement. Now we will try a relief foam block print. This is a technique where we carve into a surface and then roll ink on top to print it. We are using a piece of foam today. You can use recycled styrofoam. Sketch out the design. Trim the paper to the size of your foam block. Secure your foam to the table with tape so your design stays in place. Only place tape on top of your drawing so you can check your lines in the foam. Trace your drawing with a pen or pencil. Make sure to press firmly so the lines carve into the foam, but not so hard that it tears your paper. Remove your drawing and check your lines. Today, we are using block printing ink and a brayer. Choose a color. Roll it or brush it onto your foam plate. Practice to print on scrap paper. Place your foam on your paper and rub it with a spoon to set ink onto the paper. Carefully peel it back and check your print. Fix any lines in your design by carving them deeper or modify the shape of your plate by trimming the edges. Now that you've mastered relief printing, try your design on different flat surfaces. Thank you for joining us for this relief printing activity. I hope you had fun. If you'd like to learn more about the Mexic Arte Museum, check out our website and social media for more information.
Thanks to Nikki and Jose for this fantastic lesson. We hope all of you get to try making your own prints at home or the next time you're able to visit Mexicante. Thank you all so much for joining us for this virtual Community Night Spotlight event celebrating Latino, Latina, Latinx heritage. After the event, all of the partner videos will be available on our YouTube page, so you can go back and watch them again and again. Join us next month, October 21st, when we'll be celebrating Native American heritage with our amazing partners from Great Promise for American Indians and storyteller, Tim Tingle. Until next time, stay safe, be kind, and we can't wait to see you again.